Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another Getting Started guide for EVE Echoes, but this time with a little bit of a twist. I've kind of apparently got a bit of a name for myself as being Mr. Thrasher, so I thought it'd be fun to go through all the different Thrasher types and explain why you should start with this ship. If you are a new pilot starting out in EVE Echoes, the Thrasher can be a brilliant way of kicking off, um, and I'm going to explain why that is in this video whilst going over the different types of Thrasher, what they can do, and why I love them so much. Now before we begin, if you are enjoying this content, please do let me know by liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. There's a whole ton of Eve Echoes content on here if you look for it, um, and there is plenty more coming, especially once the beta comes back or when it gets to live, whatever is happening after this close down. 100% I am going to be punching Eve Echoes like you would not believe. That said, you can also let me know what content you're enjoying and what content you want to see, either down in the comment section below or by finding me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram or Discord. Anyway, with all that said and done, let's have a look at some thrashers. Now this is the Thrasher Hull. Looks a little bit like a Barracuda, kind of a fish or an axolotl with those kind of fins on the side there. But don't let the looks deceive you, this tiny little ship it packs a surprising punch. Now it's very easy to get one of these very early on. Run a couple of encounters in just like even just the pick up and drop off encounters and when you come to your, uh, your, your list here, come to the market, a Thrasher is a tier 3 ship so you can get it very early on. There we are, about 100 to 155,000. Not much at all to buy one of these. And even with the civilian gear, this is a great little ship just for getting out there getting some PvE combat missions done, maybe hitting some of the low-level combat anomalies and starting to loot up some better gear. Now if we have a look here, this is just a standard Thrasher 1. I've equipped it with some very basic low-tier stuff just to showcase. Before we have a look at what I've equipped it with, let's have a look at its stats. Three high slots, one mid slot, four low slots. Its roll bonus gives you 30% small projectile turret damage. On top of that, every skill point you put in small projectile turret operation will also give you 10% additional small projectile turret damage and an additional 10% small projectile turret accuracy fall off. Every point that you put in destroyer command will give you 5% shield. So let me guess, uh, let, you know, guess what skills you're going to be starting off with then. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be small projectile turret operation and possibly destroyer command. But we'll come to skills later when we talk about this ramp. The idea is that ultimately you get yourself a thrasher, you go out even with the civilian gear and you start replacing the pieces. You replace the civilian autocannons with Mark III autocannons, then you replace the Mark III autocannons with Mark V autocannons. Now three Mark V autocannons, as you can see, this is with the skills that I've got, so yours may be lower at first, will give you a very respectable 210 DPS. That's a decent amount for going out ratting um, in low level combat anomalies. This will take you up to like tier 4 anomalies easily. You can be doing uh, like tier 4 combat encounter missions easily, probably pushing even into tier 5 with this thing. As for the low slot fittings, um, because if we look at the defense, you can see that this is very much a shield based ship. Of course, we are running a shield booster to repair any damage to our shield and a shield hardener just to change those uh, resistances if we need to. An afterburner means that we can move around the battlefield that little bit easier and get into position faster. And then finally, we have a gyro stabilizer. Gyro stabilizers just, of course, up the amount of damage that projectile turret weapons do um, and make them fire faster. Flat out DPS increase, always worth it. Now, for some reason, I've got a warp disruptor equipped onto this particular thrasher. I would actually recommend a small energy Nosferatu, especially if you're going PvE, um, simply because energy Nosferatus in PvE are really, really useful. You drain your enemy's capacitor to refill yours, meaning that you can keep your shield booster going for longer. You stay alive longer, you can deal more damage, you kill more things. Simple as that. And that's ultimately what there is to a thrasher. The idea here being that you start to use a thrasher to get all of this gear, you use the Thrasher to go around and get all of these turrets. Now, once you've got all of these, uh, like the Mark V turrets, Mark V uh, Energy Neutralizer, uh, ugh, Mark, uh, Mark V Energy Nosferatu, Mark V Afterburner, Shield Booster, Shield Hardener, and Gyro Stabilizer, you can start then looking to upgrade the ship to a Thrasher 2. Now, Thrasher 2 is just a higher tier version. It's a tier 4 ship, so you are required to have leveled up your ship just that little bit. Uh, leveled up your skill, sorry, just that little bit in order to be able to use this. And it goes from being a rust colour to instead being this sort of snowy white, um, beautiful, very pretty looking ship. I do like the Thrasher 2 a lot. This is probably my favourite destroyer in the entirety of Echoes. Now, let's have a look at how I fitted this. 
Now here we are again, I'm using the same Mark V gear that we saw on the previous Thrasher. And already it's gone from the uh, 200 DPS, 210, up to 302 just by changing ship. How? That comes ultimately down to two things. One, the roll bonus. The roll bonus has gone from 30% up to 50%. And then the skills have gone from 10% and 10% um, to 12% small projectile turret damage. So it gives you just that little extra there. The accuracy fall off has gone and is replaced with small projectile turret tracking speed. But it still all comes from small projectile turret operation. So those same, same five skill points are applying to this ship too. Same with Destroyer Command. Destroyer Command on the Thrasher just gave you plus 5% shield. On the Thrasher 2, it's giving you that 5% shield plus the 10% small projectile turret accuracy falloff that was missing from the operation bonus. So flat out what you gain from this, if you've got the same skills um, as you were using from the Thrasher, if you haven't changed your skills when you go from a Thrasher to a Thrasher 2, you're gaining an additional 20% small projectile turret damage just from the roll bonus, and then an additional 2% small projectile ta uh, turret damage per level, of uh, skill projectile turret operation, um, small projectile turret operation, sorry, gaining an additional 2% small projectile tur uh, turret damage for each point in that skill, and an additional 8% small projectile turret tracking speed. That's a lot just for upgrading your ship, and you can see that that really has pushed things up here on the DPS. Of course, you also have the ability to fit rigs. I've added in a cargo hold optimization for my... Uh, for my mechanical rigs, simply because that allows me to do more of those fetch quests and the ones where it's like pick up so many miners and then drop them off here, pick up so many crates of water, yada 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 yada. And I can do those between combat missions for extra money. I then have a core defense charge extender, um, economizer, sorry, for extra shield booster amount. I have a projectile burst aerator for uh, activation time adjustment on my projectile turrets and a collision accelerator so it does additional damage there as well. Now, that means that if your turrets are cycling faster and dealing more damage, straight up and down, you are just dealing more damage. And as time goes on, of course, you can start replacing each of these turrets up here, the projectile turrets, with better ones. The Republic Fleet 200mm autocannon is your golden boy. You want to get three of these guys, and um, they're all small turrets, they're what you want to be fitting. And is that graphical glitch occurring again? Yes, it is. Hang on a second. That is definitely added in there. And you'll see that shoots right up there, 257.35. Ugh, come on. I hate this glitch so much. Let's minimize that down, see if coming out and going back in helps. Nope, it's not showing it. We're waiting for that one to fit as well. Let's get that in. Fingers crossed that has now fixed it. There we are, 386.03 DPS. Gosh, I hope that glitch gets fixed by the time this game goes to launch. <laughs> it annoys me so much. But there we are, by upgrading those turrets, you can get nearly 400 DPS on this. With better rigs um, and better gyro stabilizers, that kind of thing, you can actually push over 400 DPS in a Thrasher 2. It's an exceptional little ship for that. Um, certainly, that is now going to take you well into Tier 5, Tier 6 anomalies, uh, combat anomalies, and Tier 5, Tier 6 combat encounters. That is, that's solid. This is a pre-cruiser ship. This will do almost everything that you want it to by that sort of stage in the game, and it's going to last you a long time. Again, forget that being an energy neutralizer. That would be a small energy Nosferatu for draining your enemy's shields. And that's the, uh, the, the Thrasher 2, but what about the other types? Well, there are other Thrashers, of course, that I'm going to talk about. That's the Fleet Issue, the Interdictor, and the Guardian. First of all, let's have a look at the th uh, Thrasher Fleet Issue. Now this particular ship, you can see it's changed from three high slots to four. You've still got the two mid slots and four low slots and three and three on the rigs, but the skills now change. Now the only time you want to upgrade to a Thrasher fleet issue is after you've got five points in small projectile turret operation and you're now into advanced small projectile turret operation. I would actually recommend waiting until you are at least five levels into advanced small projectile turret operation before you upgrade to the Thrasher Fleet issue. Because simply put, you lose that 50% roll bonus from the Thrasher 2 um, and instead replace it with uh, small projectile turret accuracy fall off and turret activation time. So you can hit a little bit harder and faster. And that fourth slot does replace that sort of 50% extra a little bit. Ideally, it's once that fourth, uh, what, that fourth slot plus the five levels in advanced small projectile turret operation should replace the 50% drop down. Um, that's the theory. It does work in practice. Wait until you've got advanced small projectile turret operation to level five before moving into a Thrasher fleet issue or at least level four. I think level four is the break point. 
Um, and again, advanced destroyer command bonus is when you start to get the bonuses from scanner resolution and sense strength. Not overly important, nice to have, but I would worry about getting destroyer command to level 5 first, then coming into advanced destroyer later. Projectile turret skills are going to be more important. Now, the Interdictor is an unusual uh, ship. It loses that extra high slot that the fleet issue had, um, but does gain a mid slot. It's one of the only ships in the game that can carry an interdiction sphere launcher. Um, you have to have that plus one interdiction sphere launcher fittings in order to be able to use one. These are like weird bubble guns. They fire big bubbles um, that any ship passing through gets stuck to like flypaper. You get bonuses here from propulsion jamming uh, to your micro warp drive signature radius penalty and a bonus to the interdiction sphere velocity, signature radius, small projectile turret, that kind of thing. This is ultimately, this is a, uh, a tackle ship. This is something you use in a fleet to tackle enemy ships and stick them in place for the rest of your fleet to deal with. Considering that you're going to have fewer turrets and you don't get any of the damage bonuses except for advanced destroyer command there, and it's only 10% per level, you get much, uh, you get far fewer uh, damage bonuses using an interdictor. Ultimately, this is purely for pinning uh, enemy ships into position. The fact that you do a small amount of damage should be considered a blessing. Now finally there is the Thrasher Guardian here, this again has a force field defense module fitting, only ships with that can fit those. Um, now a force field is kind of like, if you imagine that your ship normally has a shield around it, a force field is a, is a shield that goes around other ships within a sphere, within a big sphere around you. You activate a force field and it puts a big sphere around you, any friendly ships that are inside that get the bonuses as well. As you can see, Advanced Shield Operation and Advanced Destroyer Command get you Shield Resistance, Additional Shield, Small Projectile Turret Accuracy Falloff, and Small Projectile Turret Activation Time. Again, this is not a damage ship, that is very much a fleet ship. You use this when you are flying with other people and you want to be able to just protect them, uh, protect everyone who is close to you, around you with that force field. Um, you can be quite hard to kill with that additional shield resistance and shield, but again, let's not stress too much on that. Now there is one final type of uh, Thrasher, um, now I couldn't get one of these because they are tier 10 ships, no one was selling them, I don't get why they're tier 10 ships, um, but we can look on the market at it if we go into destroyers and scroll all the way down, and that is the Thrasher Covert Ops. Now the Thrasher Covert Ops, again you still only have three of the high slots, you do get a third mid slot, um, and the ability to, uh, to fit Covert Ops Cloaking Devices, which if you've watched my video on Covert Ops Cloaking Devices, ultimately means you get better versions of uh, the cloaking devices. This means you can warp around while cloaked, you can get up close and personal to someone, drop that, uh, drop that cloaking device, um, and then immediately start to hit people. 50% small projectile turret damage, and you've got similar bonuses there, small projectile turret damage to the Thrasher 2. It's slightly less damage than the Thrasher 2, because it's 10% uh, projectile turret damage rather than 12, but the ability to put that uh, Covert Ops shield on there, plus the additional uh, accuracy fall off and turret tracking speed there, does kind of make the Covert Ops, in my opinion, it, it would come out slightly ahead of a Thrasher 2, but it is much more expensive, and as I said, being a tier 10 ship, I can't use it, because, well, let's have a look. When we come to skills, you'll see I'm only level 8. I've only just got the ability to use Battle Cruisers. I can use Battle Cruisers, but I can't use a Covert Ops Thrasher. Go figure. So, okay, you're liking the look of Thrashers, you're liking how these sound, you want to see these in action, you want to try it yourself. As I said, they are a brilliant starting point, because it is such a natural curve to go from a Thrasher into a Thrasher 2, into a Thrasher fleet issue. And then when you're doing stuff in corp like fleet warfare with your corporation, your skills very quickly transfer into covert ops, into uh, interdiction, and into the, uh, into the Guardian as well, so you can kind of become a jack of all trades. Um, whilst being a master of cruiser damage. These things can avoid cruisers so easily, but deal such a punch. Okay, so you're interested in running thrashes. What skills should you be looking at? Well, of course, under cruising technology, you're going to be looking at destroyer command. Destroyer command isn't your main skill, but it's the first one I'm going to mention simply because it's here on the menu. If you're not sure what else to train, destroyer command is always a good one. It increases the shields on nearly all of your thrashes, which just makes them that little bit more survivable. Of course, the main thing that you're going to want is projectile turret operation, small projectile turret operation. That's going to give you 20% turret damage, 10% tracking speed, and 10% additional optimal range on your turrets. That alone is worth training for, but the fact that every single one of the thrashes benefits from that early on, 
That's the skill that you need for the Thrasher and the Thrasher 2. Um, for the Thrasher... Uh, the Thrasher fleet issue, that starts getting bonuses for the advanced uh, small projectile turret operation. Additional 10% damage, 10% tracking speed, 10% optimal range, and additional 2 seconds of gyro stabilizer duration. Finally, there is then small projectile turret upgrade, which just gives you flat out 15% damage and 15% accuracy fall off, giving you just that little bit longer range with them if you need. Ultimately, I would recommend, if you're getting into thrashes, get small projectile turret operation up to level 5 immediately. Once you've got that to level 5, look at small projectile turret upgrade and at getting uh, your destroyer command up as well, just because that starts giving you those extra shield bonuses, that kind of thing there. Once you've got all three of those skills, you could start looking into... get the right one there... You could start looking into advanced small projectile turret operation and moving up to the fleet issue, but in all honesty, there are still other ones that I would look at first. Destroyer engineering is a very useful skill for a thrasher, just to make sure you've got all of the power grid you could need. If you're finding that your capacitor's running out a little bit too fast, or you haven't quite got enough power grid to equip what you want, then definitely add some levels into destroyer engineering. If you really need to, start going into advanced destroyer engineering, Ultimately, it shouldn't be that much of a need to. Um, thrashers do have a decent power grid output and a decent capacitor, so you should be okay with just those. That said as well, you can also go into defense upgrade, into destroyer defense upgrade, and add on extra destroyer shield and destroyer armor and destroyer structure. Ultimately though, before if you're finding that you're a little bit too soft and you're getting taking too much damage, don't go straight for destroyer defense upgrade, go for destroyer command first, because that just flat out increases your shields and often gives you bonuses to your turrets as well when using thrashers. So to reiterate, when starting with a thrasher, go straight in with your small projectile turret operation, get that to 5 before anything else. Afterwards, start dabbling into small projectile turret upgrade, start dabbling into destroyer engineering, and into destroyer command, then you can start looking at other skills as you need them. I quite like shield operation as well, simply because it gives you that little bit, you know, if you're using a, uh, your shield boosters, it just makes those a bit more effective. If we look under our navigation, <coughs> excuse me, then micro warp drive or afterburner, if you're finding that you're using those a fair amount, can be useful. But those main skills are 100% the three you see on screen now. Those are going to dictate when you change between your thrashes. Small projectile turret operation is your most important. Once you're into advanced small projectile turret operation, that's when you start to move up to that fleet issue. Anyway, that really does cover everything that I want to mention about Thrashers. These are my favourite destroyers, and this hull alone nearly got me away from being a frigate pirate into being a destroyer pirate. In fact, if you were to have a look through uh, most of my holds uh, throughout this beta and look at the ships that I have been using, almost all of them up until recently have been various Thrasher bodies, or they've been other destroyers like the Coercer and the Cormorant there, two that I've been using a little bit through the beta just to try things out. So Thrashers, ultimately, 100% I recommend these ships. Start with that Thrasher, train the skills you need, move into a Thrasher 2, and use that as your main ship until you've got the skills to go up into a Thrasher fleet issue, by which point you should also be looking to possibly moving into cruisers and other ship types there, and you should have a decent understanding of EVE Echoes and how it operates at that point. Anyway, I do hope this has been useful to all of you budding Thrasher pilots out there. Let me know which your favourite Thrasher is down in the comment section below, or let me know what ship you think beats a Thrasher and why. And don't talk to me about faction frigates, I'm talking about other destroyers of a similar tier and tech level. Let me know if you enjoy using things like the Interdictor in EVE Online, or if you've been using the Guardian and doing fleet stuff in EVE Echoes. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, thanks for watching folks, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!